Okay, this is the board game Here I Stand, and we're going to do an example of turn one. Um, just to show you the powers that you can play, there are the Ottomans, uh, who are over here. Uh, there are the Habsburgs, and the Habsburgs control both Spain and parts of Italy, and also parts of Germany up in the north there. Um, there is England up in that northwest uh, of the board. Then there is France, who are the blue. Um, there is the papacy, uh, who control a bit of Italy. Um, and then there are the Protestants, who actually start the game not even being on the board. Uh, so we're going to do a run through of term one uh, to help me learn the rules and also hopefully um, to give you a bit of a picture as well. Okay, the game begins by us playing this card, Luther's 95 Theses, and this is what sparks the Reformation uh, and gets the game going. We're told we need to add Luther to Wittenberg, convert it to Protestant, add a Protestant force to it, and then take five Reformation attempts in Germany. Um, if we just zoom out for a second here and have a look at the board, um, you can see that there are a bunch of different language zones. Uh, there is a German language zone, an Italian language zone, a Spanish, a French, and an English down there. And we are told that we get to convert some spaces in the German-speaking language zone. So, to start the Reformation, first of all, Luther, the reformer, gets added to Wittenberg. Uh, secondly, Wittenberg gets converted to Catholic. Now, each space uh, is controlled politically by a power. In this instance, it's controlled by the Habsburgs, and you can see that by the yellow counter being used. However, whilst it's controlled politically by the Habsburgs, uh, Wittenberg is religiously going to become Protestant. So still controlled by the Habsburgs politically, but in terms of religion, it now becomes Protestant. And the way that we show that, as you've seen, is I flip that counter over to its light side rather than its um, full coloured side, and that shows that it's Protestant. Now the other thing is that Wittenberg is one of six electorates in Germany, and every time an electorate becomes Protestant, we add two Protestant forces to there as well, and that becomes useful later on in the game. So uh, to start the game we add Luther to Wittenberg, we add two Protestant forces to Wittenberg, and we flip the counter in Wittenberg to turn it to Protestant. After that, we're allowed to take five Reformation attempts in the German-speaking language zone in Germany. And we also get to roll one extra dice than we ordinarily would. And I guess that reflects sort of the uh, spread of the Reformation after Luther's 95 Theses. Now, the way it works is, is that the Protestants roll dice. Uh, the Catholics, or the papacy, uh, roll dice, and whoever gets the higher die number um, wins, and uh, if the Protestants win, they get to flip the space to Protestant rather than Catholic, and the Protestants win in ties as well. So in terms of working out how many dice you get to roll, it all depends on how uh, many Protestant spaces or Catholic spaces you have around you, and other influence markers as well. So. To start with, if you want to convert a space, it has to be adjacent to a space that has already been converted. This reflects the spread uh, of the Reformation. So, we can convert, we can try to convert Brandenburg, we can try and convert Mudgeberg, that's how you pronounce it, or we can try and convert Leipzig here. They're the three that we can go for. Now, how many dice can we roll? The Protestants roll one dice for every adjacent Protestant space. Uh, to start with, there's only one. So we get one dice because Wittenberg here is Protestant. You also get one dice if you have any number of forces in an adjacent space. Uh, here we have some Protestant forces in Wittenberg, so we'll get two dice when we try for a Reformation attempt. You also, get a you also get another dice if you have a reformer in an adjacent space. And we do, we have Luther. So now we actually get three dice when we attempt 
uh, to convert either of these spaces. And then finally, because we are starting the game with the 95 Theses, the card tells us that we can roll an extra dice as well, so we get to roll four dice. So, where are we going to start? Well, a good place to start is Brandenburg. Uh, this is another electorate. There are six electorates in Germany, and they're really important for the Protestants to convert. Uh, you can see the difference between them and other spaces because most spaces are circles, electorates are stars. So we want to convert those electorates. So we're going to try and convert Brandenburg, and we'll see how we go with those four dice. So the Protestants roll. Okay, the Protestants got three sixes and a five. Now, that is excellent rolling. Because the Protestants win on ties, uh, whenever they roll a six, that's an automatic conversion, and the Catholics don't even get to roll. So we flip Brandenburg, that was successfully converted. And then we, oh, let me move the dice out of the way, we take the forces uh, out of the electric display box and we place them on Brandenburg. All right, so now Brandenburg uh, has been converted. Where shall we go next? Well, we'll have a lot of chances of converting this one here, Mudgeburg, uh, because we have Protestant space here, Protestant space here, force here, force here, and Luther. Uh, so we'll get lots of opportunities. So let's count it up. We get one dice for a Protestant space here, one dice for having a dude in an adjacent space, a Protestant dude. Uh, so that's two dice, another dice for a Protestant space here, another dice for a dude in Wittenberg, Protestant dude there, and another dice for Luther. So all up, that's five dice, plus, because this is the 95 Theses space, an extra dice as well. So we roll six dice. So I will just roll it off screen, and one of them was a six. So that automatically is converted as well. All right, so we're doing pretty well, but now it does get a little bit harder. The next one we're gonna go for, remember we get to make five Protestant attempts. We've done two so far. Next one we're gonna go for is Leipzig. Now, that gets one, an adjacent Protestant space there, one for the troop, and one for Luther. So that's three, plus one, because we're doing the 95 pieces. We roll, uh-huh, one of them was a six. We're getting good rolls, so Leipzig flips. Now, it gets much harder from here on in, because we are further away from our horses and from our Luther. So the next one uh, that we want to flip and we probably either go for uh, Nuremberg or Erfurt. Uh, we've got a better chance for Erfurt, so we might go for that one. There are two adjacent Protestant spaces there, so that's two dice plus one dice because it is the 95 pieces. So we roll. Okay, so the highest die roll there was a five, which means the Catholics now get to counter. So we work out how many space, how many dice they get. Again, they get dice based on how many Catholic spaces are adjacent. Now, thankfully for Erfurt, for the Protestants, there's not that many. It's just, oh sorry, it's just Castle here. Um, and that's the only one. So they only get to roll one dice, so we roll. But what a roll, they got a six. So that's pretty frustrating for the Protestants. Erfurt does not convert to uh, Protestantism. And another reason why that's really frustrating is because uh, you can't have another go at Erfurt uh, in this um, phase. So that's it. So we have to try somewhere else. We've converted three spaces. We've tried for another, so that's four. We have one more attempt, and I think we're gonna go for Nuremberg down here in the south. So, the Protestants get one dice for the adjacent space in Leipzig, and one dice because it's the 95 Theses. However, Protestants also have a bunch of debaters. I'll explain more about them later. 
Um, but these debaters have different bonuses that help you throughout the game. And one of these debaters is Busa. And Busa, uh, his bonus is that he gives you plus one dice for reformation within two spaces of Strasbourg. And if we zoom out, here is Strasbourg. So Nuremberg is within two spaces of Strasbourg. So we are going to commit Busa uh, for his bonus. And I'll explain what effect that has in the game later on. Uh, but that means we get to roll an extra dice as well. So one for an adjacent space, one because um, it's the 95 Thesis, and one because we committed Busa. So we roll three dice. And it was a five, was the highest die roll. Now the Catholics roll a bunch. So they have one, two, three, four, five Catholic spaces adjacent. So they roll five dice. Oh dear. And they rolled a six. So sadly, Nuremberg does not convert. And that is the end of the 95 Theses phase. We have started the game with four German spaces being converted to Protestantism, Wittenberg, Brandenburg, Magdeburg, and Leipzig. And that's how the game starts. Okay, we now enter the card draw phase. Here I stand is a card-driven game, and uh, there are several different cards that you get dealt um, each, uh, each turn. Um, and that's pretty much how you play the game. Uh, the cards that you get dealt can be used in two different ways. First of all, if you see the number here on the shield, um, that reflects how many command points uh, or operation points you can use uh, for that particular impulse or mini turn uh, that you have. And so here with this card, if you play this card, you can play it for three command points which means you can do something that costs three command points or something that costs two command points and then something else that costs one command point. Basically, you play the card uh, to do stuff. Um, the alternative is that you play the card uh, for the event. Uh, and there are a whole bunch of different things that you can do. Um, some benefit some specific powers, some can benefit all powers. So you have to decide how you want to play the card. Um, there are other types of cards as well uh, that you could be dealt. Um, another type of card is a combat card. This can be played um, when you are in combat with someone and uh, it can help you in a battle. Um, another sort of card is a response card. Uh, that can be played uh, in response to something else that someone else did. Uh, maybe to help you or to hurt them or to help someone else. And then finally, uh, the last sort of card you can be played is a mandatory card. This card must be played, uh, it can't be held onto at the end of your turn, and uh, it has to be played as the event. You can't just use it for command points. Uh, that's what makes it mandatory. However, because you have to play it for the event, uh, after you play a mandatory card for the event, you are then allowed to still spend the 2CP as well. Uh, so you use those cards. Or both. So the game begins uh, by different by all the powers being dealt uh, a certain number of cards and how many cards you get depends on how powerful you are. So if we just have a little look at the Ottoman um, uh, home card here we see uh, these square markers here on the Ottoman home card. Now, I won't get too much into what all these markers mean yet, uh, but the square ones I do need to explain right now. Uh, if you move back to the board for a second, uh, you'll see that there are um, a bunch of cities that are squares rather than circles. Uh, the circles represent unfortified spaces. The squares, or keys, represent fortified spaces. These are uh, economic and, I guess, political centres of your empire, or your nation. And uh, each of these keys or square markers represent an important, powerful place that you control. 
Now the reason that that matters is because the more square markers or um, keys that you control on the board, the more cards and victory points you get. So every time you control a new square marker, you take one of these off your home card and you place it on the board. And as you take them off, you see that you get more stuff. So at the moment, the Ottomans are getting three cards and eight victory points every turn. However, if they were to gain another key or square marker on the board, uh, next turn they get four cards and ten victory points. And if they were to get more, this time they still get four cards, but they get twelve victory points. So gaining these keys on the board is the way that you get more cards. Another way that you can get cards is if your leader uh, has a card bonus. So if we just have a quick look at the English um, power card for a second, uh, we see Henry VIII, and we're told that Henry VIII has a card bonus of one extra card. And so the English, if we have a look at their power card, they get two cards, but because Henry is their leader, they get one extra card as well. So overall, they will get three cards. Now, every power also has uh, what's called a home card. I'll just show you the Protestants as an example here. Um, the home card represents a card that is uh, specifically helpful for that power. And the home card is um, something that each power gets their home card every single turn. So they have to use it in their turn, and at the end of their turn, uh, sorry, at, at the beginning of the next turn, they get that card back again. So it's a card they play again and again throughout the game. So these are the uh, ways that you get cards. You get cards for the number of keys that you own. You get cards for any bonuses that your leader gives you. And every power is given their home card. Uh, at the start of the turn. And that is the card draw phase. Okay, the next phase is the diplomacy phase. However, in turn one, the diplomacy phase is really limited, so we won't go into it too much. Basically, the English uh, can uh, hold diplomatic talks with the French or the Habsburgs, um, but that's it. However, I do want to show you the diplomatic status display. This is in the right-hand corner of the board. And this display shows you whether powers are at war or allied with each other. The game begins with some powers at war with each other. So the Habsburgs and France are at war with each other, and the Papacy and France are at war with each other as well. Um, and also the Ottomans are at war with Hungary. You'll notice here that there are five major powers, I'm oh, sorry, six major powers, the Ottomans, the Habsburgs, the English, the France, the Papacy, French, the Papacy, and the Protestants. Um, they're the powers that you can play. However, there are also four minor powers. There's Genoa, Hungary, Scotland, and Venice. Now, these powers are fairly inactive uh, throughout the game. However, they can be activated by certain cards and become your ally. And when they become your ally, you get all their stuff, which is really, really good. So that's the diplomatic status display. And um, because there's not very much diplomacy, that's all we'll talk about for the diplomacy phase for turn one. Okay, um, we now enter into the next phase, which is the Diet of Worms. This phase is unique to turn one, and it reflects uh, the uh, really important meeting where Luther stands, uh, refuses to recant uh, from his beliefs, and uh, he basically says, my conscience is bound by scripture. I can't submit to the authority of the Pope. I have to submit to the word of God. And so here I stand. I can do no other. Uh, in the game, the Protestants and also the Papacy and the Habsburgs each determine how, how committed they want to be to the Diet of Worms. Um, and they do that by each choosing a card of a certain number of CP. Uh, and the more CP they have, the more committed they are. 
and the more likely it is that they'll go well in the Diet of Worms. So the Protestants submit a card secretly uh, uh, for their commitment, the Papacy submit a card secretly for their commitment, and the Habsburgs submit a card secretly for their commitment as well. Once uh, they've all submitted their cards, we flip them over. So the Protestants, oh sorry, the Habsburgs and the Papacy, their cards combine, and the Protestant card is on its own. So together, the Papacy and the Habsburgs have committed 6 CP for the Diet of Worms. The Protestants have committed 4 CP. Now, what will happen is, uh, both the Protestants and the Habsburg and Papacy will roll dice. And depending on how the dice roll goes, that determines how many extra conversions happen in Germany. So the Protestants start with 4 uh, base dice for the Diet of Worms and then they get an extra dice for every CP that they've spent in their commitment. So because they've spent four, they get another four dice. So they're going to roll eight dice for this. Now the Papacy and Habsburgs don't start on any base dice, so how many they roll is uh, determined purely on how many command points they've committed. So they are going to roll six dice for the six, uh, the combined uh, total of six command points that they've spent. So we will roll the Protestants first and we'll see how they go. Eight dice. Okay, they didn't do too badly. A, a hit is a five or a six. You see they got three sixes, so they got three hits. And we'll just put this three here to remind ourselves. Okay, now the Habsburgs and Papacy roll. They get to roll six dice. Okay, they didn't do as well. Um, they got one Hit with this six, so we'll put this one here. All right, so <clears throat> in the end of the Day of the Worms, it is three to one. Now, that is a Protestant victory, and what happens is, is the number of uh, extra hits uh, that the Protestants got over the Habsburg and Papacy is how many spaces they now get to flip in the German language zone. So let's go back over to the German language zone. And we now get to flip two spaces. We don't have to try for Reformation attempts, we can just flip them. The only uh, restriction is that it can only be a space that is um, adjacent to a space that's already Protestant. So the first one that we're going to flip is Nuremberg, which we failed to flip last time. So we're going to flip that one. And uh, you can daisy chain it along. So after Nuremberg, we are going to flip, um, I think we're going to flip mains. Uh, that is an electorate, as you can see it's a star, not a circle shaped space. So we go over to the electorate display, we take the troop out of mains, and we put him on there. So all in all, not a bad uh, result for the Protestants in the Diet of Worms. And that's the end of the Diet of Worms phase, and that is unique to turn one. We don't do that again. Okay, next phase is spring deployment. Um, and this allows each power to move as many men as possible uh, from their capital, for the Ottomans that is uh, Istanbul, uh, to the furthest lengths of their empire. Now there are a few restrictions in how they can move. First of all, they can not move over a pass. Now you'll notice some of these lines here are dotted and that reflects a pass, a, a difficult area to go over usually because it's mountainous. Um, in the action phase you can move over a pass but it costs double the amount of command points but in spring deployment you can't move over a pass so you can only move um, across normal lines here. The second restriction is that you can only move uh, to spaces that you control. Uh, you can't move into enemy spaces, and you can only move through spaces that you control. So you can't move through an enemy space to a space that you do control. So the Ottomans get to do their spring deployment first. Now, when moving troops, you are restricted uh, normally to moving only four troops uh, in one move. Uh, that's the maximum number in a formation. However, each power also has leaders. Uh, the Ottomans 
we have two leaders, Suleiman and Ibrahim. <coughs> uh, and you'll notice that they have uh, two numbers on their leader counters. The top number is their battle rating. That tells you how many extra dice they get in a battle. Uh, the bottom number is their command rating. And that tells you how many troops they can command in one formation. So Suleiman can command 12 troops. He can take 12 troops with him in one move formation. Ibrahim can command 6 troops, and he can take 6 with him. Now, when you look at the battle rating, uh, if you were to take both leaders together, um, the only the highest battle rating is taken into account. So, for example, you'd roll 2 extra dice in a battle because Suleiman is with you you don't roll three, adding Ibrahim. However, when it comes to the command rating, you do add the numbers of both leaders if they are with you in a formation. So if Suleiman and Ibrahim are taking a formation, they can actually take up to 18 troops with them uh, in a move. So in spring deployment, again, you can move as many troops as possible, in this instance, 18, uh, from your capital here, uh, to the furthest lengths of your empire. So that's what we're going to do. Now we're going to take all of our men and we are going to move them to nets with our leaders. And that's the spring deployment for the Ottomans. Okay, so now the um, Habsburgs get to spring deploy. Um, by the way, I should say, we do everything in impulse order. Uh, the order in which uh, the powers have their turns is seen in the diplomatic status display. The Ottomans go first, then the Habsburgs, the English, the French, the Papacy, and then the Protestants. So the Ottomans have done their spring deployment, now it is the Habsburgs' turn. Now, unique to the Habsburgs is that they actually control two capitals. They have one here in Valladolid. Uh, uh, by the way, you can see that they're capitals because if you look at this square marker, it has two lines on it. That shows that it is a capital. So they have one capital in Spain, in Valladolid. They also have another capital here in Vienna. Uh, so. Only the Habsburgs have this, but the Habsburgs actually have two capitals. Now, in spring deployment phase, the sorry, let me zoom out for you. Uh, in spring deployment, the Habsburgs can only move troops from one capital uh, to one space. Again, it can go to the furthest lengths of the empire, but uh, they cannot go through spaces that they don't control. So, for example, I can't take men from the capital of Spain, Valladolid, uh, and just move them through France up to Germany, because I don't control any of these areas in France. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, the Spanish are actually going to spring deploy from Venice. Oh, sorry, not Venice, from Vienna. Um, and they are going to take their men. Um, let's see, should they leave a guy? Yeah, we'll leave one guy. And they will take... Uh, we'll take all their men. And they're going to take all of their men with Ferdinand, who has a command rating of 6, so they can do that. Uh, all the way through here to Desicon. And their leader is with them. And that's the Habsburgs spring deployment. Okay, it's the English spring deployment. They're going to take Henry VIII, uh, who has a command rating of 8, up to Berwick. And they're going to take their three men from London up to Berwick as well. Because they want to take Edinburgh eventually. Okay, it's the French spring deployment. Now, usually uh, France will spring deploy to the south if they think that Spain is going to th threaten them there. France and Spain start off at war, so they are a little concerned about uh, the Habsburgs, sorry I should say. Um, however, the Habsburgs have spring deployed to this place here, which is very close uh, to 
there are spots in the east. So France is going to choose not to spring deploy, you don't have to. Uh, they're going to stay in Paris and kind of wait and see what the Habsburgs are going to do. Okay, the papacy now get to spring deploy. Um, their capital is here in Rome. Um, now the big thing to remember about the papacy and the Protestants is that their game is not really a military game, it's more a religious game. And the papacy are pretty weak militarily. However, there are a few of those keys, remember those square markers that give you extra cards and victory points? Uh, there are quite a few of them up for grabs in Italy. It wouldn't hurt to try to take one or two of them just to become a little bit more powerful so that you can do better in the Counter-Reformation. So Florence is looking pretty weak. Uh, that is an independent force there in Florence. Um, they kind of just sit there and wait to be attacked. They can't be controlled by anyone. So uh, it would be nice if we could take them. So the papacy are going to spring deploy their one troop. They don't have any leaders in the game, so they can only ever move four men at once. They're going to go to Ravenna and see what can happen there. Okay, the Protestants never have a capital, and so they never get to spring deploy. So they're going to do nothing. 